I'm going to take a look inside the Ghoulie Kit TMR joystick sensor. The more I thought about these sensors, the more I realized how different they operate compared to the Hall Effect sensors I've looked at. If you're looking for information on how these sensors perform in a game controller, this video isn't that. This video is about how this sensor is put together and operates. Let me see what is hiding under the circuit board. It doesn't look like the plastic is molded around the circuit board, but there are plastic posts that are melted to hold the board in place. I'll see if I can scrape them off without destroying the thing. Looks like some clips on the edge overlap the board. I'll just cut that off and make it simple. It really is a thin board, and I've already bent it pretty good. Hopefully no parts on the other side at the bend. I'll try and put a bit of heat on the plastic post. Okay, that worked good. I should have done that from the start. Looks like one IC and two capacitors. I probably did crack the PC board at those center post holes, but this isn't getting powered up anyway, and I don't think I damaged any of the parts. Looks like a three lead DFN package. WVB on the top line of the IC, and 2F on the bottom line, and two capacitors. C1 looks like it's connected to the 1.8 volt line, and C2 is connected to the output line, the center pin of the sensor. So there is some kind of output filtering. Has to be pretty small though, this thing has a fast output. If anyone runs across a TMR sensor IC that has marking IDs like this, please leave a comment about the part number. I would greatly appreciate it. Nothing but ground trace on the back of the sensor. This is the side facing the magnet. Interesting that the copper trace is removed right where the sensor IC is located. I'm going to try and remove the parts without destroying them and see just how the pads of the IC are laid out. I've sorted the capacitors to a board so I don't lose them. And C1 looks to be a 0.1 microfarad, so just a bypass capacitor. And C2 is reading 91 picofarad. I expected it to be small with the speed of the output signal, and 91 picofarad would be a standard value. So it's a pretty small cap, probably just for very high frequency noise suppression. So it's wired up like this. Obviously all the magic is done inside the TMR sensor I see. One of the biggest differences between these TMR sensors and the Hall sensors is the magnetic field orientation that the sensor is sensitive to. I had to make some new boards to rotate these sensors 90 degrees. With the old boards I was not able to get this sensor into my electromagnet properly. So I thought I might take a look at the difference. What I have here is a small rare earth magnet. I like using this one as its length is much longer than the pole diameter. So there's a nice magnetic field concentration at the ends. And I have a bit of red ink on the north pole. Here is a Hall sensor I see from a Genful joystick. All the Hall sensors I've tested work the same way. And this is the basic orientation of the magnets for the Hall joysticks, though the poles can swap around. As I move the magnet from side to side, the output voltage goes from near zero to 1.8 volts, the full range of the output. Now this is a Ghoulie Kit TMR sensor. With the magnet in this orientation, the output is at near zero volts for most of the magnet travel. The voltage only starts to rise when I get close to either pole of the magnet. Of course, this is not how the magnet is oriented in these joysticks. The direction of the poles makes a huge difference for this sensor. If I rotate the magnet 180 degrees, the output goes to near 1.8 volts and only drops when I get close to either pole. Now the Hall sensor on the other hand. Not a lot of difference from rotating the magnet. Actually if I could hold the magnet perfectly centered over the sensor, I think it would have no effect. This is how the magnet is oriented in the Ghoulie Kit TMR joysticks. Well I think I might have the pole swapped compared to the actual joystick. But you can see that by moving the pole of the magnet from one side of the sensor to the other, it will output the full range of the sensor. Now with the Hall sensor, with the south pole at the center of the sensor, I get full output and the voltage drops as the magnet is moved away. It doesn't matter which side it's moved to. If I rotate the magnet and place the north pole at the sensor, I get minimum output. And again, it doesn't matter which side I move the magnet to, the voltage goes up. 
Back at the TMR sensor, you can see with the magnet south pole facing the sensor, I'm at zero volts with the magnet at the top and 1.8 volts with the magnet at the bottom. Now if I rotate the magnet, I get 1.8 volts with the magnet at the top and zero volts with the magnet at the bottom. So the direction of these sensors could be changed by rotating which pole of the magnet is facing the TMR sensor. Here is the Ghoulie Kit joystick frame and magnet assembly. It appears to be the south pole that is facing the underside of the TMR sensor I see. Movement of the joystick moves the end of the magnet to about the center line. But when this joystick is mounted in a controller, its movement is even more limited. I believe this is why these have a more linear output than the Hall sensors. By having the pole face of the magnet always over the sensor, it would get a more even magnetic field through it. At least that is what I'm thinking. Of course, I could very well be wrong about that. So for the TMR sensor, I think the axis of magnetic sensitivity would be this way, across the sensor. And for the Hall effect sensor, I think the axis of magnetic sensitivity would be through the sensor, in this direction. One more notable difference of these TMR sensors is the power draw. I only measured about 200 microamps at 1.8 volts for the sensor. That is less than half the current draw compared to the Genful sensors and way under what the Favor Union and K-Silver sensors pull. Everything I see about these sensors seems to be better than the Hall sensors. They seem to be faster, have less noise, and even pull less power. The downside is cost, but I do think these are worth a few extra dollars. Thank you for watching.